So we're recording now, folks. Uh, welcome to the PyScript Fun. It's the 14th of March, uh, and we have three speakers doing uh, five talks. So we'll have Andrea, then Jeff, then Andrea, then Chris, then Andrea. Um, so without further ado, <laughs> Andrea. <laughs> All right, thank you. Um, I'll share my screen, the entire screen. Hopefully you can see it. New. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Yep. Can you also read it? Yes, we can. Or I can, but okay. I'm wearing glasses. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So um, there are two two news in terms of updates and uh, one half update news that I would like to talk today uh, to talk about today and. Um, I'll do this in uh, in chunks. So the first one, because it's already landed um, and it's already published in the Canary version of PyScript in NPM. Uh, it's a change to the um, to the Py editor or the MPy editor in this case. What I'm demoing right now, but it could be Py editor too, so it doesn't really matter. So we had a clear requirement um, when it comes to education to explain stuff and prepare something where you can hack around, check your code, see what happens. So the current state of the Py editor um, is that you, you, you can share multiple editors that are using just a specific environment. In this case, I'm, 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 my, I'm, my lack of <laughs> uh, fantasy made me call task one and task two. So these are two different things. And you can see both task one and task two are in the page. So what's kind of annoying with this setup or this Py editor experience is that actually, if I have, I mean, it's written really little on top of which, uh, which runtime and which task or which environment I'm using. And maybe I can zoom in here too. Um, but the thing is that I have task one, I see some code, and then I have task, again, task one, uh, some follow-up code. And if I try task one, of course it didn't work because A has never been defined. So there's this thing that the Py editor cannot be somehow, there, there's no setup to define what's, what's available in this editor. So if I want to print A, or do anything more complex than that. Um, I want to be sure that this doesn't need to doesn't need a run. So basically, this should just work. So here, the sequence of events is that I have a Py editor that defines A globally for this task one environment, and I want to print that A. and And the same goes for B two. So if I click just this, it's gonna fail again. So I need to do this first, and then this. And so I can see A equal one, B equal two, but these are just dummy examples. And the, the real world use case is that how am I supposed to provide a Py editor where a student just needs to solve a task? I want to provide ahead of time some library, some fetch files, something that is already available for that editor. And so this was the uh, most recent change. Um, and that's, called setup. So if I do setup in here, you can see only task one in this case. You can see that when I refresh, I don't see the editor. There's no editor at all. The setup for the editor is just to provide um, a, a setup code for the, uh, for the environment that I specify. So in this case, I don't see the first editor. I just have MicroPython task one. And if I print this, it's just A equal one because I already predefined that same thing. It won't work here because I haven't did, I, I, I didn't do a setup for task two. So I kind of need to do the setup, setup two. And once we have a setup, I thought, okay, setup is cool and everything, but what if you have as a teacher repeating setups for many editors and you want to just provide the boilerplate behind the scene and your student accordingly to the boilerplate should be able to um, 
we use whatever you provided. So in this case is task one pi. And so we also added beside the setup attribute, a source in the script. And so in this case, it's gonna be the same. So you just you just see it working. And what the task one pi does is just a equal one. And I also can do b equal three. This is a different environment. So if in here I do print a, a print b, I'm expecting to see actually um, one and three, while the task two should be still two, right? So this is the first demo I wanted to show just because we landed this somehow and we talked about this and there was a clear use case is like, as a teacher, I want to set up this environment and uh, and let users play around, find, find out what's broken, what's not, and, uh, and make it work. So I Bravo. hope this is some... Yeah, some good news and uh, welcome one as yeah, well. Yeah, And um, that's my first thing, and I'm gonna stop sharing and okay. uh, looking forward to the rest. Uh, yeah. Okay. So very, very quickly, any comments or feedback on that? Yeah, I have a quick, quick question. Well, comment uh, slash question. Uh, I think super cool, useful, um, ties to things that we discussed recently and whatnot. Uh, I think it would be great to offer control over whether you want the setup to be shown or not, um, because there are situations where I can see uh, it being useful, like to understand the context that you have in the pro uh, in in the editor or what you have already in your scope and whatnot, and some other cases where you, not maybe for education purposes and and things like this. So. Just having, and it can be an additional thing, right? Like this is already useful, but being able to see what's in that task uh, one before you, you you actually use the the editor would be useful. Useful. Yeah. Okay. Good. So the requirements were clear enough to me, at least, to not distract users with the boilerplate because the boilerplate can be very convoluted, especially for more complex tasks when you have a lot of libraries when you want to fetch files so all the kind of things that you or, or you want to read something so but i agree with you and indeed my first thought about solving this problem was to add so with the video standard html element you have an autoplay where you can set autoplay and the video starts automatically and and so i thought about having an auto run um, as an extra thing that eventually, instead of setup, you just have an auto run, and that thing gonna bootstraps uh, bootstrap out of the box. But the requirement in here was exact precisely to have a setup, so the users focus on what they have to do, knowing that there is some library and the 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 the, the, the a huge setup file probably will create more uh, confusion than because you need to understand that instead of knowing these libraries available you can do this there is this provided and not okay. so right now i focus on a very specific requirement from and yeah. and, and we demoed this and we tested this and it were and it was like okay this is exactly and, what we need and, and but Andrea, i agree with I'm you just conscious there of should time. be a way to do it right. I, i'm just yeah. conscious of time because we're, we're going to be running yeah. out of time very quickly if we're not too careful so um fabio i see you yeah. had your hand up if it's very very quick no, no, don't we skip on okay fantastic let's post okay on. let's push yes, this let's forward post on this board. yeah fantastic great i really appreciate your patience with that as well both of you okay. so andrea thank you for that um I can't remember whether it was Jeff or Chris I said next, but uh, I can see Jeff has his video on, so I'm choosing you, matey. <laughs> next up, Jeff, go for it. Amazing. Um, give me one second. I'll get my demo live here. Uh, let's see. Let me share my screen. Yes, let's see. Sorry, I can remember how I do this every time. Uh, share a test. Go live. All right. Can you see the screen? Oh, yes. Oh, man. Oh, boy. So, yeah. It's Age of Empires. Yeah. <laughs> it's not that fully featured yet, for sure. No, so sort of inspired by PyWeek, I've been messing around with um, 2D rendering in PyScript. Um, so this is all based on top of an existing 
JavaScript rendering engine called Pixie.js. Um, but all of the all of the logic, all of the zooming, all of the map map generation, and what I've been messing with this morning is all of the like dithering, right? You can sort of round off if I switch between these two modes. You can say like it generates a, a sort of a land mass and then it rounds the corners off with additional tiles. That all that logic is in Python. Um, just to see what it would be like to interact with some kind of graphical library. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's my very short demo. It's like doing world <laughs> generation. The the rendering super quick. The world generation is is not so quick. Um, yeah. This is a fifty by fifty map. Uh, doing a, a thousand by thousand map did crash some things. Um, but uh, but once it's generated and rendered, it actually you know all of the zooming and panning and, and everything is really quite snappy. So so that'll be fun to play with. And I Jeff, I, I have got. I have a question. Is this for a Pi Week entry? Because I know there are kind of you know you can prepare ahead of time, but it has to be open source and a month since it was or whatever yeah. the rules are. Looking looking ahead because it starts in a couple of days. I don't know just with my personal next week that I will get to do a full Pi Week entry. Yeah. But I was so inspired to have some fun that, that I'm not going to submit, but I'm going to just share this in the spirit of time permitting. Fantastic. Um, yeah. I so, I you are directly responsible if my work performance starts to decline in the next month because I I, I will be playing with this. <laughs> <laughs> I will say two two of the great features that made this possible are the import ESM modules directly feature that we've had recently. Mm -hmm. Um it's just it's so smooth to pull in you know Pixie.js is an ESM module, its extensions are ESM modules. You just pull them in and and use them, um, and the the only thing that's a little kinky, if I can, I know we're, we're critical on time, but I, there's there's one thing um, that I find myself doing pretty much whenever I do something like this, and I'm wondering if there's some way we want to integrate it into PyScript Core, which is oops, go live. Should see VS Code now, I think. Yes, we do. So, so let's take this line, for example, uh, which is just constructing a new Pixie application, right, with some, some parameters, a background and a resize too. So the, the JS constructor takes an object, right, not a dictionary. So what I end up doing is writing this same function in basically every project, which is just a little shorthand that uses the pyro.ffi to say, take a dict, throw it into an object, and I use this all over the place, right? Any basically any time there's a constructor, because in JavaScript, they want objects and not dicks or quarks oh, or whatever. Jeff, um, Jeff, you know what? Great minds think alike or fools seldom differ because Andrea, myself, Hood, Damien, you name it, on GitHub, we've been talking about this and we hope to have a solution to that quite soon amazing. because it is it's taking coordination with kind of the upstream underlying Python interpreters, but... Um, it's yeah. something that we're painfully aware of because I run into this exactly the same issue every day. Yeah. <laughs> um, Fabio, I know yeah. you had your hand up. You were very patient. Thank you. No, I, almost same context. Uh, in in the PR that I have opened forever around the elements, there's something like that. And I was, I think I kept it private right now, but I wanted to bring that as a topic. But then I saw you guys already talking uh, on the upstream level. Uh, but yes, I think we're all in agreement that we need we need that fixed sooner. Awesome. Especially, yeah, bonus points if transparently. Anyway. Yeah. Awesome, awesome work, awesome work. And, uh, you know, uh, and just to call out, as ever, Andrea, who's done exceptional work engaging with all the different people and provide, coming, with, coming up with answers and, you know, all of that sort of stuff. So it's been rather wonderful watching that unfold. Okay, any more questions for Jeff? If not... Andrea, uh, you're up next. Let's try and keep this short, is all I need to say here. So I've been quiet right now because you're, there's a spoiler for my third presentation, but let's let's go with the, <laughs> with the next one first. Um, I want a drum roll now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, What's next? So, Nicholas uh, proposed to have an easy, an easy fetch way, uh, and Jeff rightly pointed as Pyodide already has is from Pyodide HTTP 
you can import from pi.http the pyfetch API, which is um, actually has a good documentation and everything. But what Nicholas thought about is how about we provide a fetch works in both MicroPython and PyDite, and it's easy peasy. <laughs> Something that you don't even have to think about it. Um, what what can be the, the the best way to go? And so we had this back and forward, and what, well, eventually we came up with a with a solution, which uh, really it makes it easier to document because uh, we are just using fetch, and then we just using almost all possibilities with fetch, which could be text, JSON, if you want JSON, byte array, if you want a byte a Python byte array, but you could you you could also have uh, ooh. I use battery twice here. Okay. Um, all right, buffer. So these are all well documented in MDN and every other place on the web that describes the fetch API. And in this case, um, <laughs> just wanted to do the right thing. So the array buffer should return a Python buffer. The JSON should return a Python JSON, not a JS proxy or anything. And the text should return, of course, just a text. And a, and, um, and a byte array is an addiction that we need to document, of course, but it's just um, a byte array <laughs> of the buffer. So it, it, it's actually uh, pretty straightforward. So this, this, this is the integration test. I'm using the same API on the JS side. So um, I'm checking that I can fetch the text. Everything is just a config JSON, but it really doesn't matter. In this case, I'm forcing the text, so I want the JSON as a text. In this case, I'm forcing the JSON and I'm stringifying it for, for for simple comparison than in the in the Python counterpart. Um, and then the buffer, I'm, I'm just uh, creating a uint array, which is a byte array and checking the length and that should match whatever I have in, in, in either MicroPython or PyLite. And so long story short, uh, this works. So I can I can see the byte array. This I'm printing the byte array in both um, MicroPython and Pyodite. I have different results when I print just the um, the blob. It's a JS object. MicroPython is an object blob. Correctly so in Pyodite. I can test that I have if, if I try to fetch something something that doesn't exist or something problematic. I have an error and if I have an error I need to I will have a, a, a nice error on the screen or um, or I need to try catch so in this case um, yeah you will see exception URL shenanigans dot nope fail with status 404 and all the and all the things that comes after so we have a new from from uh, so we have from PyScript, we have a new utility, which is a easy utility, easy way. And of course we're using a sync in this case. It doesn't have to be a sync top level, but if you ever need to fetch something, we provide the fetch and it's a config JSON. And then we have the lovely uh, like method instead of get could be post or it could be head or it could be whatever you want and, and you get the results. Um, and that's pretty much it. That's uh, the PR didn't land yet, but is up for review. Um, there's the integration test, and I think um, I think we should be good. And the code is is very is very simple and is entirely <laughs> is entirely <laughs> standardly as a PyScript fetch. So. There are not many lines, it's just, it's more links to the official documentation than anything else. But basically we are just providing a fetch utility, the return a fetch, a private in this, in this Python module, uh, fetch utility that has a, a way to grab the array buffer, uh, a blob, byte array, and it does the conversion, JSON, and it does the conversion through JSON loads. This is actually exactly I, I've realized today is exactly what PyUdite does with the PyFetch API, text to get to grab the text. Um, and that's it, memory view, when you can call our buffer, PyUdite has to Py, MicroPython not yet there, but uh, we have a memory view, so they 
return the same thing. The blob is just a blob because the blob is very opaque thing in JS world. Um, and everything else is about a, as byte array. And this just create in the JS side, whatever is returned from JS world and it create a byte array. I don't know if this is the best, most performance way to do this, but it actually works. So I'm, I'm happy to move forward and eventually fine tune in the future performance if that's ever a bottleneck. And that's Bravo. it, that's my, my second. Bravo, bravo. Okay, so this is so useful. Um, Martin and I have been talking about this very functionality today. So the fact that it's kind of landed or it will be landing very soon is 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 really, really welcome. And unifying the way across um, interpreters, MicroPython and PyDide now can use the same thing. Because of course, the things in PyDide are all namespaced under the PyDide namespace, which doesn't make sense in the MicroPython namespace, blah, 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 blah. So uh, any comments or quick feedback, quick being the uh, operative word here for uh, what we just saw uh, from Andrea? If not, uh, Chris. I had just a oh. tiny question, if possible. Okay, go for it, Fabio. I posted on, on the chat, but just to confirm, that's always uh, async, like the PyFetch, yeah. so it doesn't yeah. block the main thread, correct? Yeah. yeah, it is. It's going to be async. Uh, yeah. At least, uh, yeah. I yeah. mean, from, from the worker, but we don't really want to keep repeating that complexity, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. in this case, it's just a, a uniform API that got to be async because we are not blocking Perfect. the thread. We could could be, be, uh, Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, you're I'm, going I'm, to make sorry, I'm sorry to be. I'm, so, I'm sorry to keep going over people. Else. I'm just uh, conscious of the time because um, I know some people have to drop off in in less than fifteen minutes now. So Fabio, I, I'm so sorry for steamrolling over over you there. Um, um, uh, I just want to make sure everybody gets their things in as well. So Chris, um, uh, you're sharing your screen, and the floor is yours. You're you're muted, Chris. Now we can't now we can't hear you. Input volume is right down at the bottom. Yeah, mm -hmm. the input volume is right down. Ooh. We still can't hear you if you're talking. Hmm. <laughs> can't hear anything can't hear anything okay chris since we can't hear you um we're going to be doing this by a sign language <laughs> um uh maybe um uh, maybe we should move on to um is that okay chris yeah i can see you nodding okay uh, i'm so sorry for all the technical problems um discord everybody loves discord because it's so easy to use <laughs> but it's kind of where our community found itself and so uh so this is why we're here um okay so what i propose is andrea to do the th third one if chris can figure out his microphone by the end of that third one we'll go back to him otherwise i'd like to see the floor because i feel very guilty about this to fabio so that he can finish off his discussion with andrea about the uh the, about the thing i want to make sure everybody gets their their their, their time is, is the thing so andrea the floor is yours matey so i'm sharing my screen again yeah. and um yeah so long discussion with damien MicroPython maintainer and um, Chris, I can see your hear your feedback probably right now. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a sod's law, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, this is going to be super quick. So basically, we have a new version of MicroPython, which is 1.22.0-224, whatever that means. Um, there are new features, there is a new FFI, JS FFI, um, there are new things that we need to document, discuss, and uh, especially document. <laughs> and um, But 
the good thing is that yeah, man, at some point fully agreed that um, passing Python dictionaries to the NEJS API should work out. No. Which is the problem that uh, Jeff described, is the problem that Nicholas and Martin had, is the problem that also <laughs> was a bit loud about. And, um, and the cool thing is that I proposed a solution for the pilot case, but that's still an explicit to JS conversion to make it as smooth as possible. But what Damian found out is that actually it can work either ways. So if the JS expects stuff to work in the JS way, it can work out of the same proxy without needing any explicit conversion. And that keeps in sync also the JS reference with the, uh, if you set a value or change change the reference, the, the sorry, the, Yes, the reference value to something else, the reference field to something else, uh, it's reflected. And so it's just a matter of having a better proxy exposed from the MicroPython world. And we are almost there, but not there yet. So we, we keep having the discussion, but in here, I'm just importing JS. I have a Python dictionary and I want to use a JS function. This is my API that should just do something or show stuff the reference, the pi reference that I'm passing along, and we have something that works, so I can just ref.a. I don't need to do get a because no API in JavaScript does that. Nothing <laughs> expects a map, especially when it comes to option configuration. But maps are usually used internally for libraries not exposed as APIs. Um, and so this works, and uh, I have through one, which is the good news, the first good news. Actually, this doesn't work. So um, not all operations expected to be performed in the JavaScript world when it comes to um, Py dictionary are working right now. And crickets here, so I don't, I can't, I can't see anything in here. I, I don't see any log. There's, there's nothing in there because some missing trap. But I feel like this was a huge step forward because Damien is providing both the own properties. In this case, by own properties, I mean that this Py dictionary has an A that can be accessed either in JavaScript, either by A or A. But also, if I do, uh, at least that's what he told me. If I do ref get A, this also should work. And no, I <laughs> can or get. Okay, so this was a demo effect. Or maybe, or maybe not, <laughs> not the latest. But Damien told me I can keep the get consistent. And actually, it probably wasn't for all Python dictionaries. He mentioned, um, most importantly, this use case, which is the globals. So he said, OK, we don't want to break the interpreter globals. And so in this case, the get name should still work. Uh, maybe I misunderstood him. And maybe it's only for this specific globals thing which to me still makes sense. I wouldn't mind even to have these in here because that that works wonderfully to me. Um, but this is the cool the cool part. So we can have um, quick checks in JS that stuff is present in a in a in a, in a, in a Python dictionary and we can access it directly by ref a or ref a this should actually still work. So, um, and Ray can be, oh, okay, again, uh, me too, just to see that it's not me messing around. So, um, so the ref. point, the point, this, this is a very much a work in progress, um, with Damien. I mean, we were just talking about this this morning, Euro time. So, uh, the paint's not even dry yeah. on this. Um, but the point yeah. is, is that Jeff, for your problem and, and that, magic j function that everybody seems to have re-implemented several times over <laughs> um we won't we won't need that and we have discussions in flight with hood um hopefully there's a solution that will get us to a similar place as well over on pyodide as well um so you know the the, the good news is that we're, we're we're sort of getting to a place where um the 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 obvious thing is is the thing that that, that folks get given that we're working in a web context i'm conscious of the time i want to make sure that everybody gets their say and say in the sun I, may i ask then if you have questions for andrea about this and this is a deeply technical subject so we're likely to fall into a rabbit hole if we're not careful but put them on discord um where we can sort of everybody can see that and we can we can chat about it 
so uh, let's park that. Um, Chris, uh, unmute and say something. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Awesome. Yes. The floor is yours, matey. Go for it. <laughs> Beautiful. Great. All right. Um, let me share my screen. Um, this should share my screen. Full screen. Wow. All right. Can you see my screen? I can see your screen. Okay, great. Um, so um, I, I basically took some old code that I've sort of played with um, in many environments and um, brought it over to um, brought it over to PyScript and tried to um, try to get it to be live. Um, what I thought I'd do was just run the PyTest quickly every time I, I run the code and then make that terminal screen disappear. So you saw at the bottom, we opened two terminals. In the bottom terminal, um, I ran the pie tests, and as soon as they completed, I waited, waited three seconds and then destroyed that terminal. It's just sort of a, a thing for me in my head that um, all the tests pass. Um, and then um, what I'm doing here is um, delivering to two different players, seven dominoes each, and then um, I'm, um, I have a local player, which is me, um, and then I have a re remote player, which can be a few things. It could be somebody far away. It could be, um, in this case, it's the computer making, making choices about movements. Um, and um, I can play a game of dominoes. And let me just, in this mode, I'm just um, picking by, by text. As I as I get going, so um, I'm gonna I'm gonna click the number three, and um, I've put uh, a domino three two into the play area um, because the 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 value is a multiple of five. I get to go again, and I can play three three, um, and because that's a double, I can go again. And as soon as I finish that, what happened was the computer, the remote player took over and started playing the game. So um, so basically what we have is um, the what it would look like on a board if we were playing the game is it would look like this um, sort of dominoes in a linear way. I haven't yet gotten the play area um, to line the dominoes up and do all the right things. Um, but what I wanted to do is talk to you about just sort of some of the some of the things that I'm I'm seeing as I play with um, with this stuff. So um, in the source code, I have um, a, a, a dominoes um, SVG, which actually generates all the dominoes. And then those dominoes um, sit here as SVG files. Um, so that's sort of a static thing to create. Um, excuse me, shouldn't have done that. A static thing to create the dominoes themselves and let me play around with them. And then I have areas. Um, so the remote player, the boneyard, the play area, and the look, my hand, my local hand. And I've colored those things um, in, in, in my code. Um, and then um, I have a whole set of classes here um, around the board, the players, the world, the, the, the dominoes that are played so that they, they line up in those, in those various ways. Um, one thing that I've been trying to really get, you know, to, to work is um, drag and drop and click. So I've been trying with the click handler to um, to actually click dominoes and make them make them move around. I can do that, but I'm sort of struggling with um, with with that a little bit. But I can do that, and I've also gotten drag and drop to work with the help of you guys. So I can actually pick up a domino and drag it out into the space. So this is just a work in progress. I thought I'd show it to you so you can see where, where I'm going, but it's, uh, it's a work in progress. Yay. <laughs> Any questions for Chris? Martin? You're muted, matey. I knew that. I knew that. I did that on purpose. Um, so yeah, so I was going to say, Chris, one thing on the um, when you had that whole stack of when decorators stacked up is because you were doing on ID. Could you um, give that a class 
to those things that you wanted to select and use a use a class based selector so a single selector would find all the things that you wanted to instead of doing id base yeah yeah that's that's exactly what i was hunting for the, that yeah. that idea how can i yeah. turn that on and off dynamically <laughs> the players only allowed to move the dominoes that are in their hand they're not allowed to move all the other dominoes right so that's what i wanted to be able to do is turn on and off that capability as dominoes are in my hand or not in my hand anymore yeah. Right. Good. Cool. Any more questions? No, just pointing out that maybe we can consider uh, passing selections, uh, collections as well, not only selectors. Uh, but yes. <clears throat> we'll figure out later. Um, yeah. Anyway, this is good. Yeah. It's really great. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, and I, I, I really appreciate the use of PyTest. I've been using PyTest with some of my own like framework type stuff um, and it's just nice that it just works it's like really cool um i'm again like i said i felt very guilty fabio for cutting you off earlier um would you like to continue now that we've kind of managed to get all the conversations done and we've still got perhaps four minutes left to, to, to... No, i have to admit to it yeah uh, <laughs> so, uh, uh, <laughs> Um, no, if you, if you want to ask something, but I, I have a few minutes. Really. Yeah, okay, Fabio, go for it. Quick question. Uh, no, it wasn't. It wasn't really a question. I just said that uh, with that POC that I've demonstrated in the past, I'm using requests, and I'm quite excited to remove requests and use the fetch. Yes. Yeah. The, the, the thing with requests is that it works <clears throat> uh, synchronously, and 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 it's good from a Python point of view, I guess, because you you just expect that synchronous thing to, to, to block and then keeps moving. Um, but when, when we discussed the fetch, it, it was like, how about we just provide the fetch? And the fetch is, at least on the DOM, on the web, is, um, is a well-defined API and everything is inevitably asynchronous because it doesn't want to unblock. We could have thought about a different version. One is for the worker, one is for the main thread. On the main, blocking with uh, XHR synchronous and forcing the synchronous Thing of XHR, which has been deprecated, is old style API and everything else. It probably wasn't a um, very forward thinking thing to do. And so that's why we went asynchronous. I don't know how much troubles that ca causes, but I think for very specific synchronous use cases, what has been used today should still be used until that work. Um, but fetch for users is like, hey, just you know, you're fetching something, it's going to take network, it's going to take parsing and blah, blah, blah. Let's use fetch, just, just away the fetch text or fetch this or, or whatever it is. And probably that's reasonable. Also, because all examples on the web about fetching something usually are are consuming uh, asynchronous uh, APIs. So hopefully that's not too problematic for you. I don't know how much work is to, I mean, once one thing is a sync, everything has to be a sync. So that's kind of a virus in the in the program. But yeah. I hope you will find a way, or you, you, the, the, there is a way for you to 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 improve anything you're doing with uh, with a simpler code and less dependencies. I don't know. Can can I just um, point out? To, to, yeah, to, go for it. Yeah, can I just point out to Fabio? Uh, use it. Tell us where it doesn't work, where it's not so good. Uh, um you know the feedback is what we need basically um yeah. and yeah, yeah. i'll i'll do that tomorrow start replacing things and let you know uh if i found any anything that's uh not working but let's be honest it's fetch so it should be fine <laughs> yeah 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 and then we can document it and make sure that we're expressing it in the right sort of a way so people know <laughs> yeah. this is the idiomatic way for PyScript to do this andrea sorry yeah, before you try it, it has to be approved and merged. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Um... Oh, man, I've been in meetings all day, but yes, I'll get to it. I'll get to it as soon as this meeting's over. And then I will review it and probably, yeah, you know. Uh, anyway, okay, so. Uh, I, I thought that was going to be Nicholas's next demo, which was approving the PR and merging it and doing a release. But I, uh, it's just... Uh, I've I've already done a release as a as a PyScript fun oh, uh, okay. uh, uh, thing uh, um, in the past, but uh, okay. Thank you very much to everybody who's presented. Uh, as always, this 
fills my heart with joy watching the kind of the funky, geeky, strange and downright uh, frightening things that people get to do <laughs> with PyScript. So uh, I really appreciate the fact that you've you've all turned up and, and, and show us these things. Keep engaged with, with Discord via Discord. We're friendly. So just keep asking questions. Tell us where it's broken and all of that sort of stuff. Um, and uh, we'll see you in a fortnight's time. I'm just about to stop the video. So let's just stop that.